Every now and then I get an email and a contact from somebody that has the idea of uh, fabricating container homes in another country and shipping the houses and modules here and generally the country the other countries China and the idea is that you could fabricate cheaper with the, take advantage of the low cost of labor and then ship to the United States and I also get emails from companies from China that are going to um, talk about uh, making shipping container buildings and shipping them over here and there's a couple of issues that come up with that and I'm going to discuss that in today's video All right, let's say you want to fabricate in uh, China or Vietnam or anywhere, Thailand, doesn't matter, India. Uh, there's a couple of stumbling blocks that you run into when you um, are going to fabricate that far away. The first one is quality control. And uh, most states in the United States have what they call modular building programs where if you're fabricating a building off-site, far away in another state usually it has to comply with that state's require the state you're putting the building up's modular building regulations and the idea of that is since you're fabricating a building off-site you have to have some way of quality control that is not going to be able to be met by the local building official coming out and inspecting the building the building's going to be manufactured before it gets there so how do you how does a state make sure that it is code compliant? And what normally happens is instead of the local building official, the state assumes responsibility for assuring that the buildings are going to show up code compliant. And what the states do is they will allow the fabricator to hire a third party engineer to come in and do inspections of the building to make sure they're code compliant. Now, that gets to be an issue if you're in a place like Vietnam or China. You have to find somebody over there that can get licensed as a third party engineer. You also have to get your fabrication facility approved by the states that you're going to work in, um, which can be done, but it's an issue that has to be taken care of. It's probably possible to find a third party engineer over in China or Vietnam, you have to have somebody licensed in that state that you're working in as an engineer. You have to go through, like in Georgia, a procedure to get them accepted as a third party engineer. It can be done, but it's, you know, just one more problem. The other problem is, is you can't, this is just a problem with any time you do manufacturing far away from where you're um, needing your product, you can't go out there and observe easily the manufacturing during the process. If I'm fabricating, let's say, in North Carolina for a job I've got here in Atlanta, it's not a big deal to go to North Carolina to observe what they're doing and see that everything is going right and it's not that hard to answer questions that they may have as they're getting into fabrication. All that can be done fairly quickly. If you're doing the fabrication in some province in China, I can't really go over and take a look at it on a regular basis because of the expense and the time. And if there's questions, there's the distance factor of being able to go over and see what the problems are. There's the language barriers and uh, different time zones, all kinds of communications barriers. Okay, all of that can be worked through. Once you've done that, then you have to ship that modular building to the location it's going in. That can be fairly expensive. It's going for a long distance. Um, and, of course, loading it on a cargo ship, it's not going to be standard cargo. So the cost goes up for shipping it. So one of the solutions that people have tried to come up with is take the shipping container, modify it in a location where you take out the doors, take out the windows and that kind of stuff, do all the modifications of the building, and then somehow close up the doors, close up the windows, 
So this thing now complies as a container again. Now, that becomes a serious problem. And I've been through this on a couple of jobs. And we never did come up with a way to do this on a rational basis that, you know, saved any money. They ended up with the cost just started to go sky high. And let me explain why. <coughs> Excuse me. The shipping container must comply with ISO 496-1 in order to be accepted for international service. ISO 496-1 has some very tight specifications on how you got to load these containers and also waterproofing. Waterproofing turns out to be a serious issue and I'll cover that next but let's talk about the weight of the stress issues it requires you to put force on this part of the container to check for racking it requires you to put a weight on the container to determine what it can do for lifting it and also you have to put weights on a weight on the roof um, in a certain area to test that the problem that you run into is the minute you start cutting up a container it starts to lose strength. So if you cut your doors and windows or worse, let's say you cut part of a side out of the container, it's going to lose strength. And one of the big problem things is the racking force. When this pressure goes here and against this side to simulate the racking of the container, if you've got a good part of this container missing, it fails. And so you end up having to come back and try to work out beefing up the structure more than you would normally do for a building to stand the loads that the container has to stand. So you now you're starting to take away any savings that you've had from fabricating in that distant facility. So once you go through all the calculations and let's say you figure out you know what you've got to do you figure or what you've got to do for stiffening the container if you've taken a part of a side out or door out and how you're going to work around that you have to test the container in order to get the certificate they won't accept some calculations and what i found is it's very hard to anticipate all the different reactions that you're going to get uh, when you start working on this design so let's say you do your um, prototype container you put it under load and it fails then you have to go back and try to figure out why did it fail what was wrong how to fix it and then you have to turn around make the changes try again hopefully the second time around you won't fail your prototype so now you've done this for a certain model of container how many times are you going to do this how many different types of containers are you doing like if you've got a house and you've got uh let's say you're using i don't know let's say you're making a house out of six containers dependent on the architecture you have potentially six different prototypes that you've got to test to get them certified and you know it's not the testing has to be done witnessed by a classification agency like the american bureau of shipping um, it, it has to go through a whole protocol and you might have to, you're going to have to do that for each uh, fabric, each module that you're trying to ship, uh, each different type of module, I should say. Now, other than the issue with the um, strength, we can work around the strength issue. It you know container ends up a lot beefier than it would. All right, let's say we work around that. The next issue is the waterproofing. Right now. Let's say in this container here, uh, which is a normal 40-foot container, you, your main issues with waterproofing is right here at the door. And it's a serious issue with if you take a look at how they work the door, where the openings close, and how they've got them, uh, the gaskets and whatnot in the door to keep it waterproof. You start taking out windows and doors and you put them back in, you've got to come up with some sort of a gasket that can take the water test that's required in ISO 1496-1. And that water test is basically shooting the container with a fire hose. 
and it's very difficult to meet that water test. Chances are it won't make it at the windows and doors you put in. And by the time you do get it to make it, you're going to come up with a very heavy duty, very strange kind of gasket formation. Again, that's starting to raise the prices up. So by the time you've, and you get, again, you do your prototype test, and let's say at the prototype test it fails. You get to go back and redesign the what are the uh, flashings and the gaskets again. Test again. Is it going to work? And the problem is, is the part with the waterproofing is not something you can easily do in uh, on the drawing board. You can look at it intuitively, but it's not something you can set up with calculations. The strength of the building, you can get around a lot of it, you know, with finite element analysis and pretty much tie everything down before you test it. But the waterproof test is not an easy one to make it through. And you could end up doing a number of different setups just to try to make that. And there goes your money there. Okay, so you need a lot of money to work this out. And the question that comes up is once you've worked out how you can make these containers that you can fabricate them over in Vietnam or whatever, um, is it going to be worth it? And are you going to be able to sell the same model over and over again? Or are you going to have to keep changing your modules over and over again and have to go through the same nonsense of the design, testing, prototyping, possibly failing in the prototype and retesting until you got it right? It could be very expensive. Um, if you think you can come up with a model of a module, maybe two or three modules, and you are sure you're going to be able to use these modules over and over again forever, you might be able to get away with doing this and making it work. But the, these are the issues that you have to consider before going forward. And the, the big issue I hope you come away from this is it requires a significant amount of money up front for the investment. I've actually had people that had in their budget $5,000 for doing the engineering for this kind of stuff. You can't do it for $5,000, okay? You need a lot more money. Whatever you think you need, it's going to be probably double. Um, and then you have to find somebody willing to engineer it. Um, we're turning down jobs like this because I've had issues with previous clients and I don't really feel like... Uh, repeating the issues. There's unrealistic expectations, unrealistic budgets, unrealistic business plans, and you need to have a realistic budget, realistic expectations, and a realistic business plan. So let's reiterate, it's complex to fabricate overseas. Uh, you have logistical issues to solve like your uh, third-party inspections and you're uh, getting your facility certified in the state that you want to sell your containers at. Shipping, if you're thinking you're going to make a container uh, module that you're going to turn back into a container so you have lower shipping costs, that's very difficult also. Very expensive to do the prototyping and develop the system and you basically are limited to only a certain amount of modules that you can do and uh, you need a lot of money up front to invest on it. let's say you do this now on the other hand let's say you do this in the united states do your fabrication and your um you know uh, your fabrication and construction completely in the united states then you can take the ship and container in any location, any state, find a, a facility that can do the fabrication that's got the state certification, do the design, do the fabrication. Uh, there's an ICC standard. Oh, I forgot to mention, ICC has a standard for uh, shipping container fabrication facilities. You have to get a uh, evaluation service um, report uh, and approval of the facility that 
is going to be another roadblock overseas. Here in the United States, it's not going to be so much trouble to get the ICC certification. ICC, by the way, is International Code Council. So anyway, if you do all this, the problems that you have with fabricating overseas aren't there. You've got to have a really good discount for fabricating overseas to make it worth doing it. If that discount is there, it makes it worth it. You can sell it cheaper here in the United States with the same quality. It makes sense to go ahead and fabricate in another country. I remain skeptical. And uh, if you feel that you can do this, I uh, wish you the best of luck. And uh, thanks for watching my video. And I look forward to your comments below.